Should car buyers be aware of what dealer trainers are teaching? Of course you should. Today, I'm going to give you my reaction to a car trainer you've probably never heard of. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homer Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's stellar video is brought to you by The Homer Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a very savvy group of auto experts to boot. Today, we're gonna help you understand the value of following what the trainers in the industry are teaching to other car salesmen. You're gonna face a salesman who will do this stuff to you anyway, so why not know their game plan? That's why you've seen so many role play videos here on the Homer Guy channel hitting on various training techniques because it's stuff you need to know. If you appreciate us working hard to bring you up to speed with our great videos and you wanna support our efforts, well, there are plenty of ways for you to get on board and show us a little appreciation. Recommend us to your friends and help us get to that million subscriber mark. Today, I'm going to give you my reaction to a lesser known car trainer. His name is Tony Swedberg. And for all practical purposes, Tony seems like basically a good guy. The points I'll be making today is simply this. Just like a lot of other car salesmen, Tony hasn't really figured out that if you have to trick people into doing business with you, they aren't really seeing value in what you have to offer and you've done nothing to earn their trust. Funny how that seems to be unimportant to a lot of people working on a car lot, but I digress. Now, let's hear from Tony. Hey guys, what brings you in today? Oh, you guys wanna learn how to work a car deal? Perfect, my name's Tony Swedberg, follow me. After the typical cheesy greetings, did you like how he said, follow me, and then he didn't go anywhere, he was still right there in the kitchen. Hey guys, I'm Tony Swedberg. I've been in the automotive business for almost five years. I make about ten to $15,000 a month. On a rough month, I'll bring in seven to 8,000. This is consistently. I've been in the business five years, but I've been consistently selling and making that much money since my first month in the car business. I just wanna point out here that Tony is mentioning that he's been in the business just five years, and yet, He's teaching mind tricks to others already. Can you imagine what the veterans have up their sleeves? This is how quickly these guys get sucked into thinking the way a car buyer is treated and all those little lies they tell is just fine and dandy. All right, guys, enough about me. This video is about you and helping you. So I'm gonna give you five ways today that's gonna help you get a lot better in sales. And starting with the first way is knowing how to ask the right questions. Asking the right questions will get you through the process much quicker. So I'm gonna to touch up on that briefly. Every time you hit the car lot, you're facing a barrage of questions. This is taught by every car trainer there is. It's called the psychology of the sale. It gets you to let your guard down, be less defensive, and also turns over the controls to the car salesman. This means you're losing control from the moment you get out of your car. Let's hear his recommended questions. Um, the first question I'm gonna get into is when someone first gets out of the car, you must say a question like, hey, what brings you guys in today? Or, hey guys, what brings you in today? And saying that, they're gonna tell you what brings them in. Hey, I'm getting a car, or I'm getting a car for my daughter, or I'm coming in for your Nissan Altima, or whatever it might be. If you say, hey, can I help you? They're gonna be like, no, I'm okay, I'm just looking. No, I'm just you know, doing this, or whatever their excuse might be. Notice he uses the word excuses. Like everything you say are just excuses. What he really means is that you're supposed to buy the car they want you to buy, and if you put up any objection to that, it's just an excuse. Have you ever heard of anyone describe your feedback on something that you wanted to buy as just an excuse? It's pretty arrogant. So you want to stop the objection before it even comes. Handling objections is awesome, but if you can stop it before it comes, that's even better. What he's describing as an objection is simply you voicing what you want or don't want. And if you aren't agreeing with everything he says or aren't willing to follow his lead, that's an objection. And they're going to try to head you off at the pass. Now, let's say you're going to try to get a phone number. You know, the area code in my area is 727 or 813. And that's very well known around in this area. So if I'm going to get a phone number, I'm not going to say, hey, can I have your phone number? And they're going to be like, no. Uh, there's no, uh, why do I need to give you that? Or no, I don't need to give you that. I'm gonna say, hey, what's your phone number? Is it 813? No, it's 727. Or, hey, what's your number? Is it 727? No, it's 813. And, um, you know, hey, what's your number? 813, and then give it a pause and let them say, yeah, 813, uh, oh yeah, 456, whatever they wanna say. So that's a way to get through the process a little bit easier for you guys. Getting your name and number is one of their first goals, and yet, 
Have you heard anything remotely close to a good reason why you should give this guy your phone number? I didn't think so. Don't give him your phone number. Also, when you get into trying to get someone's license so you can put them in the system, hey, let me just grab your license so I can pull some keys. That's how you want to do it. Getting your license. He makes it clear why he wants your license, just to put you in the system and claim you as his customer. And here you thought there was some other legitimate reason for him to have it, right? He just uh, put it out there for you. You want to tell them why you're grabbing their license, put your hand up like this, let me just grab your license so I can pull some keys and they'll go for it. Don't say, hey, can I have your license? No questions like that. Look at that, we're only two minutes into this and he's already recommending that salesmen lie to you about why they want your license. You just heard he wants it to put you in the system, but now he's gonna lie and says he needs it to pull some keys. Total nonsense. Um, get in a habit of asking questions like this. Um, if you have to watch this video a couple times, so be it. So if you guys like the video so far, make sure to hit the subscribe button. Okay, you guys, so the next tip is gonna be you wanna keep emotions high. He says you wanna keep emotions high. This is the cornerstone every trainer out there hypes on. Keep the customer emotions high. Why? Because you make really stupid decisions when your emotions are clouding your good judgment. Let your emotions out of control and wow, you're lost. So the first thing that you want to do is not bring them in the dealership. Stop bringing your customer in the dealership and sitting them down. I don't care what manager told you that. They're trying to teach you this process. You keep landing the person on the wrong car. So they want to have you sit them down and find out what car. But what that does, it kills the emotion of a customer. They want to go look at cars. Tony objects to bringing customers in immediately and sitting them down because it kills the emotional high. But... I do agree that you shouldn't be going in to sit down right away anyhow. A lot of dealers do that because they're trying to shortcut the process. If you had a dealer who immediately brings you inside and sits you down, I recommend turning around and leaving because nothing good is going to happen at that dealer today anyway. If you get to a dealership and the first thing you try to do is bring them down, sit them down and ask them questions, nobody likes to be interrogated um, or ask questions over and over. They want to go look at cars, you guys. So be like, hey guys, what brings you in today? Okay, once they tell you the car or what kind of car they're looking for, great, those are over here. Follow me and make sure to introduce yourself. And as you're walking over to the cars, build rapport, you know, make friends and build a relationship with the person. The customer doesn't have anything right now that they're in love with. They just just got out of their car they have no reason to stay there I'm gonna say that again they have no reason to be at your dealership you have to give them one first before you can take control before you take control everything is always about controlling you so once they find something they like once they're interested they like you once they think that you can help them once they realize that then you can start taking control. But at first, you got nothing, so you need to go get something. And can you imagine in real life meeting someone who seems to be helping you, then you like them, and the only reason they're doing what they do is so they can control you? Well, that's car sales for you. And you're not going to do that by walking them inside and killing the emotion. Go show them some nice cars that they want to see. Go show them the reason why they came in and be different than those other sales guys. <laughs> be different than those other guys? Really? Let me ask my audience, have you seen anything out of Tony's training so far that suggests that he's different from those other guys? Just comment down below. All right, guys, you guys have to stop being so professional. You guys can't go by the script of a certain way to talk and act like, hey, welcome to Clearwater of Toyota of Tampa Bay, and my name's Jonathan Johansson, and I'm going to give you the tour today. Um, now, what brought you over this way? You can't be that crazy professional. Be yourself. At this point, I couldn't agree more. All that professional scripted nonsense is garbage, and yet, you guys get treated to it all the time when you go to a car lot. You see that? I told you, scripts were a favorite of the trainers. If you're in sales out there, be yourself. Just knock off all that slick talking garbage. Hey guys, what brings you in? Great, who's the car for? Awesome, my name's Tony, nice to meet you guys. 
Um, and now, what kind of car were you guys looking for? Okay, great, they're right over here. Take them right to what they want to see. Don't bring them inside like I told you guys before and kill the emotion. No, they want to go look at cars. Get them to fall in love with something on the lot. You can go walk them over to a car that's going to, you know, fit their budget, fit their needs, start asking, you know, what they're looking for, but also listen to them, you guys, and hear what they want. And when you hear what they want, then you can, you should know your lot. You should know where that car is. You should know where that $13,000 car with backup camera and Bluetooth and low mileage, under 50000 like they want. You should know where that's at. The reason why I picked this one is because it has this, this, and this, and that's what you said you wanted because I was listening, you know, and that's how you sell a car, you guys. I'm going to stop him here. He made some good points. A salesman should show you what you want. However, notice that he's listing back to you what you said you wanted. This is another sales technique. Reel you back in when you get cold feet because he's got exactly what you wanted. I was listening. You know, that, that game. Now he's going to use it as ammunition against you. Okay, so this is very important. This is tip number four. So tip number four is going to be you have to pay attention to your customer's emotions. You have to pay very close attention. You have to read their face, read their emotions. If they're very excited. You have to pay attention to your customer's emotions. He just keeps going back to that, doesn't he? Do you see how important that is to car sales? Have I finally convinced you that it must be a logical decision for you, not an emotional one? Again, emotional people make really stupid decisions. That's why he keeps teaching it. As you go through the sales process with the customer and you build value, you have to realize what you've said to them and if they're excited, if they're in a state to where if you ask for the business, are they gonna say yes? If they're, if they're not in that state yet, you have to go build some more value. You know, tell them about, go show them service. Show them how nice your service drive is. You know, we got Starbucks coffee, we got your snacks. Did you guys want any water? Yes, because coffee and snacks have everything to do with good car buying decisions, right? Okay, well, this is where you hang out while you're getting your free oil change or your free first oil change or whatever it might be. So get them excited, build value, and watch that emotion go up. Once it goes up... I have to stop here because he's making a point about emotions again, and it brings up another point. The object is to get you steadily more emotional. Did you pick up on that? Hey guys, if I get this car in your budget, you'll take this one, right? And that's when you ask for the clothes. So once you feel like it's all built, you have to know. Timing is very important, you guys. You have to know when to ask for the business um, a certain time. I'm not saying there's like a one second time period, but you have to know that window when the value's built, when they like you, when they trust you. Hey, if I get in your budget, you guys will take this one, right? And I told my client the other day, he's new. Tell people you guys are new. The old, tell people you're new. I'm the newbie here. Again, he's teaching them to lie just because it might make you like the poor guy more and maybe cut him a little more slack. Everybody loves a new salesman who doesn't think they know it all, who doesn't talk all the time. One thing that you can say when you're new is, you know, telling them you're new, of course, and also saying, hey, you know, if you help me get one of my first sales or if you help me get my first sale, if you haven't sold a car yet, I'll make sure you get the best deal. And they get excited. That really makes a customer excited that like they're lucky enough to be your first deal that they know you're just going to give it away so you can get one under your belt. And it's kind of like you want to be on their side against the manager and that's how you want them to feel. It's you and them. As long as they're happy. You know, as long as you guys are happy, I get a sale. And you can tell them that. You know, obviously, if you guys are happy, I get a sale. If my managers are happy and you're not happy, I don't get a sale. They don't buy cars from me. So, you know, whatever you guys are looking to do, I'm going to do whatever it takes. I have to stop him here because he's referring to a common ploy that salesmen play. It's you and the sales guy against the sales manager. That's what they want you to believe. Not true. It's you against both of them. And you're sitting there on your own no matter what they tell you. Okay, guys, and this is extremely important. This is having a solution for everything. That is going to come over time. That is not something that I can tell you and you're just going to miraculously have. Having a solution for everything. Yep, the multiple forks in the road. Well, that's all the training they do so that no matter what you say, they have another goat trail to take you down. I'm going to give you guys a few examples, and those examples are, if someone says, I really want a white car, 
Great, well, we don't have a white one here, but the good thing is it only takes us, you know, one or two days at most um, to go to another dealership. We give them one of our cars and they'll give us a white one. So if you guys like the way this one drives, looks, and all the features on it, um, just use your imagination right now. Picture it white. Now, if I got this car white and I got it in your budget, you'd take this one, right? And um, do that, you know, use that as a close. Now, if someone comes in and they say, I don't have good credit, I'm not sure if I can get approved, I'm really worried about it, um, make sure to build value in your dealership. You know, uh, our finance managers, we go through 40 different banks. Um, one of the reasons why I work at this dealership is because we have like an awesome finance team and they're so good at getting people approved. The problem he was suggesting, the problem solving, nothing wrong with any of it. That's what a good salesman should do. The point on finance, however, how amazing their finance team is, well, that line is a setup line in most cases so that you let your guard down and let those fin finance officers empty out your pockets. We go through 40 different banks, so we know after looking at your information, they're so good at what they do. Some of them have been here five, 10 years and find out how long they've been there so you don't have to lie. Almost nine minutes in, and now he's suggesting it's better not to lie. Interesting and they've been here five, 10 years, and they know exactly what bank to send it to based off of, you know, if the bank looks for, the bank looks for your car credit history, if you've been making your payments on time, if they only care about how much debt you're in, if, you know, we have certain banks, you know, if you've had a repo, they give you a second chance, whatever the case might be. Some of you don't know that the reason a dealer has so many banking connections, it's not because they're trying to get you better deals, it's so they can find a bank for each customer that allows them the most latitude to add stuff into your loan. When we recommend that you talk to your own bank or credit union first, some of you don't know that it's your own credit union sometimes that can save you from paying document fees and many other fees. And why? Because the credit union itself oftentimes doesn't allow the dealer to pack fees into your loan. So they stick up for you. Did you know that? Just another reason you should be talking to your own banker first. Um, so if you want, we can go ahead and get an application and I could get you approved before you even, you know, go take a look at cars. That way we have a certain amount of money that the bank gives us. Um, let's say, you know, they give us $15,000. Then we can go out there and we can look for a $13,000, $14,000 car. After taxes, you're at 15. So they'll give you an amount of money that you can go shop with. And that's how it works, you know? This sounds logical, but I don't care what your financial situation is. Don't ever let them convince you that you should fill out an application first and that will tell you how much car you can buy. I can't think of anything more financially irresponsible than doing it that way. Don't ever let the dealer banker or the dealer be the decision maker in your car deal. You know, your manager will plug in a random car, take their credit, send it to the bank, see what kind of approval they'll get, and they'll say, you gotta put her on this car. Now all you gotta do is be like, hey, this is a car you can get. You know, um, this is the nicest car I could find for what the bank would give you. Here's where all that bank talk comes in if you let them do the application up front. Here's the car the banker wants you to have. Who of you wants a banker choosing your car? Such a dumb way to buy a car. And they have no other choices. When people have one choice, they buy. When people have no other choice, they buy. What a pitiful situation to be in where the only choice you're left with is the one the dealer wants you to have. All right, let's recap a couple of things. Notice how many times he used these two words, emotion and control. The more emotion you bring to the table, the more control you give up. They work hand in hand. The goal of the salesman is to get you to be as emotional as possible so you're easier to control. I get that many of you love the car you drive and you get excited about cars. Nothing wrong with that. But you have to stow that during the car buying process. Love on your car later if you must. While you're on a car lot, think of emotion as being the tranquilizer dart for logic. Your brain goes numb when your emotions get involved. If you enjoyed today's reaction video and would like to see us do more of these reactions to other car sales training content out there, we'd be happy to do it. As you can see, you can learn a lot just by being aware of what the car trainers are teaching. And Tony Swedberg is just a new guy starting out. Imagine the tricks the serious pros have up their sleeve. It gets a whole lot tougher than what you just saw here today. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up. 
and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the Homer guy and make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. We post notifications and other updates on several other social media sites and answer car buying questions there too. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see appearing here will be easy to find in the description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. We use your tips to sponsor great causes like Maggie. This amazing young lady works with university students to help them get more out of their studies and ultimately more out of their lives after school. We enthusiastically sponsor Maggie and she thanks you in advance. Just like the Homework Guy channel, Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. If you can't do a tip, no problem. Just help us get the word out. The Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. You can help us get to a million subscribers. We'd really appreciate that. And by doing so, you're helping to defeat the dishonest operators in the car business who are still trying to figure out that good old fairness and honesty and transparency. Well, it is the best business model. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.